All right, so let's continue on with this uh, Famicom repair, refurbish, modding. It's noise in the background, central air is on, heat wave, etc., etc. You may have noticed some changes, though, since we last saw this. I haven't mostly completed, um, including this little janky mess here, although there's the uh, AV out, so let me go over what I did because I did a lot of soldering and desoldering off camera because it was just a lot easier to do so. So obviously, again, finished all of the AV wiring. We already knew the uh, video was working. I also have the audio hooked up and it is working. I tested it. We'll be testing it again. The difficult, probably the most difficult part was desoldering the uh, RF can here, the shield, because of the fact that it's attached directly to the ground plane. But he also had the um, RCA jack for the uh, RF out was also soldered to the board as well. It was not a, a fun endeavor. Also, the 7805 hooked up this little heat sink, which is hooked up to the RF modulator for additional heat dissipation. Yeah, it was a pain in the butt to get that out, but I got it out, and I managed to remove the RCA jack by using a lot of uh, desoldering braid, and then finally at the end, just heating up the can itself and pulling it out. Tried that at the beginning. I could not get it uh, to come out, probably because of all the solder that was on there. At first, I was afraid. I thought it was maybe welded together, which would have been unfortunate because then I would have to destroy the RCA jack. Not that you can't find replacements, but still, it would have been nice to keep the original one. The next issue I ran into is inside the RF uh, modulator were a couple of coils and a capacitor that were in the way of this uh, heat shrink sleeve here. So I went ahead and desoldered those as well and keeping all the extra parts in this bag so this could be potentially restored to uh, default. The, the capacitor that was there, I re relocated it to the bottom of the board. I wasn't sure if it was needed. I'm assuming it's just for the uh, RF modulation, but I didn't want to take any chances. The inductors, I was almost certain that they were just for the RF modulator. Either way, it works, so I'm not too concerned with that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to get this hooked up, get everyone's favorite game, Super Real Baseball 88. And where is the... There we go. Make sure this is in the off position. Sound is coming out of both speakers because I did bridge the left and the right uh, audio in the TRRS jack, but there you go. Everything's fine. And unfortunately, I just broke the camera mount as I was trying to bend it back into place. So there's that. Good thing I have a few extra of these types. Not this exact style, but you know, one that'll do. Let me get that attached and Let's remount this camera so we can continue with the uh, modding. I still want to try and get an LED uh, mod installed into the power switch. And you can just tap off of 5 volts from the 7805. You can tap into the power switch itself, which is what I would recommend doing. And then the ground, just pick any ground point on here. So I'm probably going to need a 560 ohm resistor, unfortunately. I have between 510 and 680, uh, so I'm probably just going to use a 510. Yeah, I think it'll be close enough. I mean, if, if it really was a problem, I could always add another 50 to it if I had to, or 51 in this case. Plus, there's some variance in these, I'm sure. So, let's see what happens when I power it on. That's interesting. It's always on. So I'm guessing as long as there's power coming into this board here, there's always 5 volts coming out of the... Huh. Guess I'll have to pick a different spot for 5 volts then. So, rather conveniently, that's 5 volts right there. 
almost too convenient. But I can also pull if I wanted to from, um... From one of these pads here as well. So... But we'll just go right there since it's right there and convenient. Now, let's see if it comes on. Power's off. There we go, that's better. That's how it should be. Cool. Of course, the next step, logical step, is to put everything together, but I can't do that until the controllers are done since I have to put the uh, PCBs back in the shell since they attach directly to the console. Those aren't clean yet. I've got to get those clean, so I'm going to do that now. So this aside for now. Give it a good cleaning, and it's definitely looking better, although it's a little oversaturated in uh, this footage here. Let me see if I can adjust that. Yeah, that's probably a little closer to what it looks like. A little yellowish, but it's not as bad as it was. Um... Even the inside, though, is kind of yellowish, which I don't know if the entire plastic shell just yellowed and that's it, or if maybe this was a different batch or something, because most of the Famicoms I've seen were almost like a white in color. But I'm going to leave it. I don't think it's bad enough that I need to uh, actually do anything with it. Plus, removing this is going to be a pain without potentially breaking it, because it has to be kind of bent to remove from these uh, holes here. Um, on top of that, I don't really want to remove these stickers, although this one's a little crooked. I may go with a uh, hairdryer to loosen up the glue a little bit and straighten it out. I left the plastic uh, sheet on the uh, Famicom, the family computer logo here to protect it because it is made from metal. But otherwise, yeah, it's it came out really, really well. I mean, the rest of the parts are just red plastic here. Um, this is where I'll do the LED mods somehow, maybe in this little spot, little gap there. Um, and then the bottom shell just came out fine. This is made from paper, by the way, so when you're washing it, be very careful. Um, it, it was soaking in some soapy water for a while, so this did get wet. But when I pulled it out and gently dried it, I put some isopropyl alcohol over it to dry it up a little bit. This is metallic, you don't have to worry about that at all, so... Oh, and the sticker here is intact as well. So now you can buy replacement stickers. Uh, I've seen them. What I haven't found though are replacement uh, controller inserts, the little brass plating that you know has all the print on it and everything. I can't show you now because the controllers are currently soaking a little longer because they're extra grimy. Um, but I can show you the controller PCBs themselves. If you've ever opened up an NES controller, this is basically the same thing. In fact. It has the wiring for both the uh, Famicom and the NES. So, at least for this controller, this is controller one. Controller two doesn't have start and select, but it does have the microphone built into it for certain games that support that. Uh, but otherwise, these are, in fact, uh, technically compatible with the NES if you rewire a couple of points and then obviously give them a different connector for internal use so that you can hook them up to uh, regular NES controllers. Uh, controller ports, and there's some additional wiring you'd have to do on the NES, I think, but you could, in theory, uh, use the microphone in Legend of Zelda as it was intended on the uh, Famicom version. I believe the code's still there to activate that feature, so... Alright, of course, the central air is on, because of course it is. Um, but here's the uh, cleanup controllers, player 2, player 1. Can definitely see some scuffs and things like that. I might be able to buff those out, but I'm not going to worry about that now until I can actually get replacement faceplates because I think there's no point if it's going to, you know, be scratched here e either way. So, but for the most part, uh, the buttons are all the same and everything except the uh, player two does not have a start and select. 
like I said, they have a volume slider and a spot for a microphone. So I'm not going to reassemble both controllers on camera. I'll do only one. And then we're going to get out of this noisy basement and reassemble the entire console because um, I don't want to be down here anymore. That's basically all there is to it. So I'll go ahead and get the other one reassembled off camera and then we'll go into the game room and put it all back together, hook it up to the CRT and make sure it works. All right, well, here's one last look at everything disassembled. Controllers, main system board, RF modulator, and of course the AV mod, top bottom shell, random pieces, screws, extra parts, and of course a game to test with once everything's back together. Let's go ahead and do just that. All right, we'll start with the eject mechanism because that's gonna have to be installed into the top shell before I can really put anything else in together, obviously. So, if I remember correctly, the spring has to attach to the front hook here, which means that it's going to have to be facing this way, and this part here slides into the slider, which I've installed meaning this will have to go as such. And then the screws will go in together. should just, and that's all there is to that. Of course, it won't stay in place until we get everything else installed. So we'll continue on with the next piece, which is gonna be these buttons, just to make sure the reset goes here. And it doesn't seem to matter which orientation it goes in, so. And the next, we'll set this to the side for now because I have to reassemble the controllers, well, reattach them. Player two, player one. And it's gonna be very fun rerouting these cables. Now, they are kinked in the right places where they go and route through the different channels and around posts and everything. So at least I have that going for me, which is kind of nice. And then we also have little grommets here that go around to kind of protect the cables from the sharp edge of the shell itself. I think it ultimately go in like that, but they'll have to be routed to everything. Now let me see, I think to route that. I think I know what the issue is, and if it is, it's a problem. Pretty severe one. So it's still not clearing, and it's gonna be tough to see, but it's, once I screw everything back in, it's rubbing right up against the PPU chip because of the socket that I put in there, which obviously in hindsight, you know, I probably should have done a test fit earlier, but I didn't think there was going to be that little bit of a clearance in there. So, dilemma, do I just not use the eject mechanism, which I don't think anyone really does, or do I go back and desolder the socket and solder the chip directly back to the board again, which I don't want to do, and it's usually not best practice in most cases, especially if you ever have to remove the chip again. Uh, continuously soldering and desoldering can damage, you know, vias and all of that stuff. And 
Not that you're going to be taking out your PPU often, but in the event the PPU does go bad, which we know that they can go bad, replace, you don't want to risk damaging it. So, uh, maybe i just do a, away with the eject mechanism and just not use it. This right here, it's practically cutting into the uh, PPU, which fortunately this is just a just surface damage, but it's still an issue. I guess I will just remove the eject mechanism for now, store it with uh, spare parts, and if the console is ever restored to factory, then it won't be an issue. So let me go ahead and reassemble it, and uh, we'll continue on. All right, so yeah, without the eject mechanism installed, it shouldn't be an issue with the fit. So you, again, may want to decide to do it that way. You might not want to socket the chip. It's gonna be up to you, uh, but definitely do some test fitting before you put everything together. We got the rest of the screws in and then figure out the controller cable routing and go from there. Actually, I take that back because there are these extra posts here that screws do not go into. So it's possible it just wraps around like that. I've got this power switch cable in the way. So let's do this here. It's a tight fit, that's for sure. But you kind of want it to be so that it's got strain relief. But it does make it easier to get the grommet on. So, in the next one. And there. Technically, we should be ready to wrap everything else up. One final test fit. I think we should be okay. And the final six screws. Okay, sorry for it being dark, but I wanted to give you guys the best view of this screen possible. But here's a moment of truth. And as you can see, it works. No idea what this says. We'll just go with it.
Well, I'm not doing great. Haha, <laughs> you hit me. But as you can see, it does work. And on top of that, there's the uh, power LED. It's very faint, but it is there. So, and it'll have to do. It's unfortunate that only half of the button actually lights up, but there's not much I can really do about that. Let's uh, test out one more game, though. And I did manage to pick up another game for it the other day, something that I can play without needing to understand Japanese. I will say this, playing with this super short cable on the controller really sucks. You've got to get really up and close with it. And for a television of this size, a 13 inch, it's probably the perfect size if you have to be this close up. But yeah, so uh, interesting little project. It uh, was a little more frustrating than I uh, expected. I can't uh, use the eject mechanism because I socketed the PPU chip and you might not want to do that if you're going to do a similar mod like this. But, you know, lessons learned, right? That's uh, it's kind of why we do uh, the things that we do. So, Famicom seems to work great. Uh, no issues so far. Uh, as you can see, games are working just fine. This little glitchiness there, that's actually normal. Uh, I've seen that on the NES version as well, and I've even seen it in some emulators. Not all, but some. So uh, that's definitely not the mod or anything else that I might have done. What do you guys think? Uh, any of you guys have a Famicom that you already modded or want to mod? Do you have a uh, NES Junior that uh, you know only does RF, and you obviously uh, can only use the RF signal? You can use the same mod to get composite uh, out of that. Or for either of these systems, you can also RGB mod them and even HDMI mod them. So there are options out there. Uh, those are a lot more challenging, a lot more difficult, and definitely takes a, a lot more experience at soldering than even I have for the past almost three years that I've been doing this. So, uh, but what do you guys think overall? Any suggestions or tips, anything like that? Any games I should get for the Famicom that don't require me understanding Japanese, uh, drop them down below. Otherwise, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, all, and I'll catch you later.